All right, a hot topic inside of the Build Math Minds Facebook group is always fact fluency. <laughs> but recently, uh, Lori posted asking about how children build automaticity in math. And that sparked some heated comments. <laughs> Let's just say that. People are very passionate about helping kids become automatic with their facts. But there's two very different sides to this debate. I'm definitely leaning towards one side, but I also think we need to find a balance. And I'll give you a little uh, unpopular opinion towards the end also about my thoughts that you might not expect from me, okay? All right, so um, she had also asked about like research. And I think that this is an important thing that we all become familiar with. So we will post some of the research articles and books that back up what I'm talking about today uh, in the comments area or down below this video, wherever you might see it, so that you can do the research for yourself. But I also know, and let's be brutally honest, most of you won't do it. <laughs> most of us are pretty firmly based in our belief. And our belief is based in the way that we learned. And you can read all the research you want out there. It's probably not going to change your mind. <laughs> if you learned your facts through memorization, through drill and kill, through flashcards, and you were successful at that, then you believe that that is the best way to help kids develop their facts. But if you were one of those people who learned by memorization, drill and kill, time tests, but you did not have success with that, then you believe that there has to be a better way for students. And some of you might be like me, like I learned through memorization, drill, kill, all of that stuff, and I felt like I was good at math, that's the way I went into teaching, and then I realized that that didn't work for all of my kids, and I needed to find a way to help those kids out. And just yesterday, I was listening to Jenny Bay Williams, and she was encouraging us to get past our personal experiences, and just because it worked for you, doesn't mean it's going to work for the whole class. And I think that this goes on both ends of the spectrum, whichever way you're kind of viewing things. I really do want you to keep an open mind, check out the research, and then listen to your students, okay? So one of the articles that I'm gonna post links to is by Arthur Baruti. Uh, it's from 2006, and he talks about the two different views on how to help kids build automaticity. So I'm going to read a direct quote from this article. And the, the two versions are conventional wisdom, which is mastery grows out of memorizing individual facts by rote through repeated, repeated practice and reinforcement. That is the conventional wisdom about how we build that automaticity. But in that article, he also brought up the number sense view. This view is that mastery that underlies computational fluency grows out of discovering the numerous patterns and relationships that interconnect the basic combinations. These are the two views, and you could see it in the comments of that post. There are definitely people who are very, very passionate and believe that conventional wisdom that the only way that we get kids to master their facts is through memorization and repeated practice and reinforcements. People are very passionate about that. We also have the other side who are very passionate about helping kids look at patterns, build relationships, and see connections between some of the, the certain types of facts to some of the harder facts. And I'm definitely leaning towards the number sense view. You guys know that. I am a number sense person. So you can guarantee my take is that we should be going the number sense route. And I think that there's um, a few points, though, about why. Okay, So in our standards, it does say that kids need to be fluent. But what does fluent actually mean? And there's, there's a line in one of the standards, I think it's in second grade, and it says, know from memory. 
And people assume that means we need to get kids to memorize their facts. But memorization is that conventional wisdom. I can memorize things for short term. That's, that's the way typically we tend to memorize things. I'm memorizing it because I need to remember that phone, phone number, which nowadays we don't, we just type it into our phone, right? But <laughs> whatever it might be, I'm, I'm memorizing something for a short term until I can get it into my phone or I can write it down or whatever, or I'm memorizing for a test that's on Friday, right? That doesn't necessarily mean I can pull it from memory when I need it. Pulling from memory is when you're being able to recall information when you need it. And that ties to the number sense view. When we, the, in order for our brain to recall information when we need it, the research behind how our memory works and how our brain works is that the more connections we make, when we learn new information, if we can connect it to more things that we already have in our brains, the easier it is to recall that information. So if we are focusing our instruction with our students on just taking the fact six plus seven and associating it with 13, the answer, that's one piece, that's one connection point. But if we are helping kids see connections between six plus seven and six plus six, or six plus seven and how we can pull the fives out of the six and the seven, and we could add the fives together and we've got one and two on the other side, and or maybe the make a 10, like all of these things that we can help build connections to for our kids, the easier it is to recall that information. The, the um, I don't think we have this one in our list of the research, uh, Annalise, so we may need to add this one in there, but there's a um, article by Constance Camille, and she did a study looking at kids who were being taught, um, you know, through play versus kids who were being taught to like to memorize. And, and it was with the basic facts. But one of the things I remember from that article was she was talking about how three plus four was the hardest fact for kids to be able to recall, even if they were in the like memorization group. Um, maybe it wasn't the memorization, but I'll, I'm going to have to go back and look at that research. But basically, I remember that three plus four was the hardest one for, for the kids to recall. And she had talked about how it was the hardest because it has the least connection points. So three plus four is seven, like there, that's a connection point. But those strategies and how it connects to other numbers, it, it can be a double, it could be three plus three plus one more, it could be four plus four minus one, but there's no like make a 10 connections. Like if you were looking at six plus seven and you try to look at all the things that you could possibly connect six plus seven to, there's a lot more connection points than three plus four. And, and so one of the things that she talked about was the more connection points that we can help kids make, the easier it is to, for them to recall that information. And she saw that, that the ones that had the least connection points were the hardest ones that kids kind of tended to get wrong more or took longer to get the answer to. Um, so that's one of the big things is that we want to focus in on getting kids to recall information, not just memorize the, the facts. Okay? And, and the end goal is to be able to quickly get answers, right? I mean, that, that is a big deal in mathematics, okay? but there's also another piece, and that's what that three parts of fluency, if you've ever heard me talk about those before, comes from Susan Jo Russell, and she talks about that kids do need to be accurate they need to be efficient, they need to be fast and, and quick, and also accurate. But the third part is they also need to be flexible. And that's where those connection points come in. If I forget, like if I've memorized nine or six plus seven, I'm gonna stick with that one, six plus seven is 13, but I forget it in a moment, you know, um, do I have another way to figure that out quickly? 
And that's what flexibility is all about. And that's where that number sense view that Arthur Barodi was talking about comes in. If we are just focused on conventional wisdom of let's have a memorize and do repeated practice, um, sure, they might have those memorized and they might be able to get an answer quickly and uh, get the correct answer, so be accurate and efficient, but they aren't flexible thinkers. And that's really the kind of learner I was. I could get you an answer, but I wasn't a flexible thinker. So the main part that we need to focus on, if we want to build kids who are flexible thinkers and we aren't just focused on answer getting, then we need to build their number sense. That's where the number sense view comes from, helping kids be able to see connections between numbers and that helps them build more connection points. And then the way that we do that though is through lots of experiences. Like you can't just directly teach a kid um, that six is one more than five. Six is one more than five. Six is one more than five. Learn it, know it, let's use it now to help you to solve six plus seven because you can grab the fives out. And I, I like if you try to just directly teach that to kids, it just becomes another rule and procedure. But if you're building their number sense through experiences and they're playing a game and their partner gets a six and they get a five and their partner uh, gets to go one space further than them on the game that they're playing, they notice that five is one less than six. And the more that they have experiences with number and seeing relationships between numbers, then they will use those to help them build their fluency and flexibility through number sense, not through memorization. So we want, we want to start with that solid foundation of a number sense view. And then yes, we do want to help solidify their understanding through practice. That's, that's also how our brain works, right? That if we don't lose it, if we don't use it, we lose it, right? That's the saying. If we don't use it, we lose it. So if all we're doing is, is just all this number sense stuff and we're just letting kids play and explore with numbers, it's not enough. That's why I really hate in education where we are like, no, it's all in over here. Like it's drill and kill, practice, practice, memorization, practice, practice, memorization. And then we're like, no, 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 no. We have to, you know, let kids play and explore and build number sense. And, and that doesn't work either. Like it's, it's got to be some of both. Yes, I want to lay a foundation. I want to help kids build a sense of numbers. I want them to use their number sense to see connections and build those connection points in their brain so it's easier to recall, but they also need more practice with it. And practice should be purposeful. It's not a worksheet of 50 problems that are random problems. It's building, it's using those connection points. What am I wanting kids to practice the connection? What connection points do I want to help them build? And let's practice those connection points. And it can be fun. I am a firm believer in gameplay that practice doesn't have to be filling out a worksheet. It can be playing a game that you're gonna do 100 problems while you're playing that game. And that's way more fun than doing a hundred problems on a worksheet. So kids do need to be building their number sense, playing and exploring with numbers, but we also need practice. And my final point is that unpopular opinion that you may not expect from me. Okay. So here's the deal. You heard everything I just said. Number sense needs to be the focus. We want to build that foundation. We want to build their flexibility. But if all if if I have done that for years and I've got a kid who's still struggling and counting on their fingers to do six plus seven and they're in fourth grade, push comes to shove, I'm probably moving towards memorization. Because if that was my child and I know that if we aren't quick with things, it can hinder their ability. I'm not going to be forcing, like I'm not going to be doing time tests and making it anxiety ridden, but I might be doing a lot more practice of just straight, here's the fact, here's the answer, let's practice those things, right? So that they, they hear that repetition. But that is if I know that they have had years of that foundation being trying to be built and those connections just aren't being made. 
It is a very small percentage of your kids, but let's be real, there are those kids. And so I'm not saying you never go to memorization, but you don't go to memorization with first graders. When they're still developing an understanding of numbers, that's not our first avenue. It's my last avenue if we've tried everything else and those connections aren't being built. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments on that. But I, let's be real. Like if that was my kid, I, I would want to make sure that they could quickly come up with an answer so that they can use their brain to help hopefully see other things, right? Too often their inability to be able to add and subtract quickly hinders their ability to um, think through a problem because they're stuck in that first part of something. And so I, I, I wanna be realistic and say, you know, I'm not taking that off the table. That if, if, it, if I see a kid who really needs it, then I may resort to that. I'm not saying I would. I would try a lot of other things before we ever get there, but I'm not saying that it should never be an option for kids because some kids need that direct correlation that having too many things can be confusing for them, but that is not the majority of kids. Okay, as my parting thought, um, we don't want to just teach kids to memorize facts. They will become automatic, right? If we focus on memorization, it will become automatic for them. But automatic does not mean fluent. And they might become automatic but at what cost does that come? Do we build our automaticity through memorization, but that also builds a hatred for math? Do we build their automaticity through memorization and it builds a math anxiety? That's not the route we wanna go, right? So we want to help kids build that love of math, become flexible thinkers, and not just answer getters. I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so you can build the math minds of your students. Now I'm gonna go read your comments.